It has been a very successful film in a financially very disappointing summer for Hollywood. Here I'm making the case that the marketing of It was the critical component in its success. And what a success it has been. It made almost one and a half times its production budget in the first day of sales. Initial openings predicted a very respectable 50 to 60 million dollar domestic gross for its opening weekend. It ended up being 123 million. And for me, I'm not surprised, because the production did such a good job in building up hype. I mean, I know I'm saying that now with the benefit of hindsight, but I'm still going to say it. The short of the matter is it has succeeded in the same way that Apple succeeded. It wasn't good at just capturing early adopters, but converting those early fans into marketing nodes. There were lots of people who followed the production all the way from principal photography to the release of it, and they were regularly updated by members of the cast and crew. More importantly, the people who were invested into it early, the people who were fans early into the production, helped to create a lot of noise, and in my opinion, helped to bring it to a more general audience sooner than it normally would have been. The fact that this has Stephen King's name attached to it, of course, helps immeasurably. Not to mention the familiarity many moviegoers already have with the premise, thanks to the ABC miniseries from 1990, starring Tim Curry as it or as Pennywise the Clown. Oh yes. They float, Georgie. They float. It's a difficult novel to adapt, as it comes in at over 1100 pages, has a narrative that alternates between two timelines, and deals with a mixture of paranormal, philosophical, and social ideas and themes, which all amount to an enormous amount of content to squeeze into a film. Essentially, the story is about a band of young friends who must face it, an otherworldly entity of evil that usually manifests itself as Pennywise, who emerges from the sewers every 27 years to feed on children. Just like any other clown. This was always a film that was going to attract hype. However, I think that hype could have been split between those who were excited and optimistic for it, and those who thought it was a cynical cash grab. That really didn't happen. The production of It was very keen to capture good favour early on. It did this by communicating through its imagery that it was going to try and be true to the novel. This image of the turtle radios tur 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 turtle, tur 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 posted far before teaser trailers way back in September 2016 is a reference to Maturin the Turtle, a character in the book and a recurring character in other King works such as the Dark Tower and the Wastelands. The reason this is important is because it lets early onlookers know that the film was perhaps going to be very different to the miniseries, which doesn't reference or feature the turtle at all. More importantly, it was a direct reference to the source material. It showed the film was being made with that in mind. References like this, knowing nods, I think were made to reassure fans of the novel that the film knew where it came from and wasn't going to be disrespectful to the novel or just use the It name on a random clown slasher film for convenience. It showed that 2017's It was thoughtful and that it knew what it was and where it came from. Equally, the film's character design and the reveal of that character design was very careful. The first images of Pennywise, released in July 2016, were, I believe, very carefully managed, as was his entire design. He isn't a million miles away from Tim Curry's take on the clown, but he clearly is something else. We could have gotten almost anything. I think the, the recent trend in scary clowns is toward messy and sloppy, a la Heath Ledger's The Joker. This is a much more elegant, much more refined, much more controlled kind of makeup design on Pennywise the Clown. However, just before Pennywise was revealed, the director, Andy Muschietti, posted a number of images on social media of posters of missing children, all of whom are, of course, characters in the film. I mean, imagine if they weren't. That'd be weird. Those posters were a minor thing for sure, but they helped set the tone of the movie, and I've seen them in many other places. Later in the same month, Muschietti posted a few storyboard images and a few images from the set. There were full costume images of Pennywise, there were snippets shown, and there were details 
kind of revealed. Now these all sound very minor, and they are, but they helped capture imagination. What they did was they helped reveal a story that most people already knew. They helped reveal a story that probably everybody who was following the production from 2016 certainly already knew. But what they were really doing were revealing that this was the film you've been waiting for. This is the film you think it is and that you want. This is the film these details are telling us that you should be anticipating. It's a weighty horror film about it. How are you not hyped about this? According to the LA Times, New Line's test audiences were composed of at least 20% fans of the miniseries or the book. They knew it was important to bring those people on board. Now if you possess any amount of common sense, this may sound very obvious. But how many reboots or remakes or adaptations have all of us seen where the filmmakers, or really the studios, really never cared about the fans of the original content? They did really well to get it right here. And maybe if the production did have a bigger budget, it wouldn't have been as important. But still, they didn't have a bigger budget. And it obviously was important to their strategy to gain and keep fans of both the novel and the miniseries. When you have multiple people from the cast and crew sharing images from the set or concept art or bits of posts on social media, when random people share that stuff on social media, and when you tease as well as this campaign did, you create buzz. It was, of course, a small buzz at first, and then the trailer started to drop in March, which was at the same time that Stephen King started tweeting about it. The core group of early followers helped to ignite hype in horror files, and then they, in turn, helped to ignite hype in general moviegoers. The trailers were, critically, well received. They didn't look stupidly over the top or ham-fisted. They weren't tone deaf. which are phrases I would use to describe a lot of the big-budget Hollywood films that came out this year. The trailers offered that thing Hollywood always seems to be squeezing in between its hands like a bar of soap. They offered something different, but at the same time, something compelling. A conventional horror, some might argue, but with a unique selling point of being both from Stephen King and of having a monster that is instantly recognisable as being terrifying even amongst those who've never heard of it. My own experience is that I have seen a lot of people talking about it over the last few months on social media and elsewhere. I've seen a lot of YouTubers, who don't usually talk about movies, talk about this one. Maybe not necessarily make a video about it, but talk about it all the same. Of course, the early marketing and the success of its trailers and promos whipped up an enormous amount of attention for a film of its budget. I think I should concede, however, that its lasting success, outside of its opening weekend, is no doubt assured because of its warm reception. Still, a little bit of guerrilla marketing couldn't have hurt. Prints and advertising budgets are, as a rule, usually about half the size of production budgets. However, I think that's probably changing, and I would certainly bet that the prints and advertising budget for it was significantly higher than that. Although that is speculation, I really don't know. But it did open at the most number of theatres in the US ever for an R-rated film, 4,103, and that is not a cheap thing to do. It is the first of an intended duology, and you can bet that just with the money It has made already, that will happen. Don't know what all the fuss is about myself. What's so scary about a clown? Do -do 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 -do. I'd love to know what you guys think about it. Did you follow its production from an early point? Did it live up to your expectations? And how do you feel about it generally as a movie? As ever, thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you next time where I'll be discussing just how bad the summer was for Hollywood before it came along and why. See you then. Go! Said I had to get cleaned up! Hell it! Hell yeah!